We are live. Here. Welcome, welcome. This is the Addiction Show. As some of you may or may not know, but you, you will soon. My name is Shira Goldberg. I am the hostess with the mostess. And I uh, have a great guest on the Addiction Show today. She's one of my role models. So I'm very excited to have her on our little show, our little lemonade stand. This is Melissa Colleen. She is phenomenal. She's done a lot of amazing pioneering work in the recovery community. Uh, specifically, her forte is in the area of recovery coaching. So thank you for that. Her book, which is uh, one, of my, one of my primary resources, is recovery coaching. This book came out last year, right? Yes, August 2013. Okay. And the title is Recovery Coaching, in case you can't see it, A Guide to Coaching People in Recovery from Addictions. It is such an amazing effort because this is the first book ever on recovery coaching. It's uh, relatively new. She's going to talk about that and also um, what, her, what her professional uh, capacity is, which is an executive coach for recovery leaders which I love that because everyone needs help and she's very concise and she knows coaching I think uh, just about better than anyone so welcome Melissa thank you Shira for that great introduction well you know you're you know you have a big fan here so getting I'm getting a president of your, of your fan club t-shirts made as we speak so <laughs> this book is actually a part of a curriculum that I'm working with. It's at parfessionals.org, which Melissa had a lot to do with, um, with the curriculum and advising and in a consulting capacity. So you are really making a difference in just so many ways. I think that's one of the most uh, um, awesome, <laughs> for lack of a better word, it's just one of the awesome things that you're you're making available to people that are interested in getting into um, the recovery coach uh, coaching capacity or if they're interested in doing something with the recovery community or they need to um, uh, or they're interested in having a better understanding of what recovery coaches are which that is definitely your forte I have a lot of people that have never heard I mean from social workers to treatment um, treatment center um, directors mm -hmm. to um, medical doctors, they've never heard of recovery coaching. So it's something that I, um, I've i been concise enough to get into an elevator pitch, <laughs> but I think you can elaborate and, uh, and explain why it's such an important aspect in the continuum of care. Well, it just so happens that my elevator pitch is I help people after they get out of treatment to return to the world, the real world, that was most likely part of why they went into treatment to begin with. So it is very much uh, an aspect of the continuum of care. My own elevator speech tries to bring that into light. And it's very important to point out that sobriety is only the, the first step. And I always mm. uh, compare it to building a house. You need to have a strong foundation to build upon. Otherwise, your chances of success are diminished. So having a recovery coach, and that's where I feel I'm, I'm the most effective as after they're um, on their way to wanting to maintain a sober lifestyle and that's exactly what it is but because of uh, the the length of time that they were in uh, involved with their addictive behaviors um, it, it's really uh, relearning skills that you may have uh, forgotten that you haven't used in a long time so it's interesting to to just see all of the all of the ways that uh, people are are gaining their strength back in that in that sense of confidence and empowerment, and I think that's uh, one of the things I really uh, love so much about recovery coaching. You're absolutely right. Retraining the brain 
reintroducing life skills that have never ever been learned many times even a 30 or 60 day stay in a treatment center people forget how to drive their cars they forget their ATM codes you know it's very very uh, intensive not just how to give up drinking and drugging but how to live a lifestyle in recovery that's what we do we help people relearn those skills and it's it's really a it's, it's such a great contribution they see it as a is give a way to give back and that's the the wonderment in the the sense of appreciation I have that's what mm -hmm. initially uh, got me interested in when I heard about when I first heard about recovery coaching I was uh, a little familiar with uh, the concept of being a life coach and I was telling you that I was uh, I was like this would be great for people in in addiction recovery and like I invented it <laughs> so as I started clicking around as I as I like to do then I found you and you are one of the true pioneers of this. So, tell us a little bit about the book and how that came how how that came about. Well, I went back to college at age 50 after 20 plus years of recovery, but was going back to college to study to be an executive coach. And I did the same thing you did. I said, wow, this is like being an executive coach is exactly what people in recovery need. <laughs> they kind of need this. They need more than a sponsor. They need less than a therapist, but more often. And so I'm sitting in a 12-step meeting, listening to people around me from all different walks of life whether they're you know a machinist or whether they're a CEO talking about how difficult it was to integrate recovery into their life into their work so I'm writing this master's thesis on executive coaching and I threw it out the window and I rewrote it explaining everything about recovery coaching the history and that's how I got introduced to William White and uh, then I researched and researched and researched and there was nothing there was nothing there were a couple of uh, articles by Boyle and Loveland and uh, the McShin Foundation and that was it we're talking about a very difficult uh, way of, of, of presenting a master's thesis with little or no documentation. So most of my work was done by calling up the phone, the person's on the phone, and talking to them and saying, how does this work? Can you expand upon what you wrote about? And slowly I pieced together my first master's thesis on what is recovery coaching. I think I needed to define it and so then I continued on a second master's thesis more like a PhD the University of Pennsylvania didn't offer a PhD in executive coaching they offered a master's of philosophy and that threw me into a practicum just like a, a resident would be in a hospital I had to pick up three coaching clients and work with them and write all about it so that's really where I got the nuts and bolts on how to be a recovery coach what do you encounter uh, what are the pitfalls and at the same time I was working with Doug Kane at Sober Champions out of LA and Rick Parrish out of sober or out of Delray Beach and his company is called Sober Escorts and so I was working with them as a recovery coach and a sober travel escort so that experience I threw into the book as well it was really learning by the seat of my pants 
And the second thesis I combined with the first thesis and put together this book because nothing hit harder than me trying to find out more about recovery coaching and there was nothing on the internet at the time. And we're only talking about 2008. Nothing. And now, <laughs> if you go on the internet, there's a lot more information. Thank God. <laughs> Well, I think it's because uh, people are the ones that are fortunate enough to be made aware of what recovery coaches do and in what capacity. I think there was just a lot of people that weren't familiar with the, with the topic at all. <laughs> like, what is a recovery coach? And you've explained it pretty well because this is a question I hear all the time. Well, mm -hmm. what's the difference between a recovery coach and a sponsor? What's the difference between a recovery coach and a therapist? And what's the difference between the recovery coach and, and talking to your friends about sobriety, you know, that are also mm -hmm. in, in some mutual support group? I make sure that I document that information in all of my contracts because I want to make perfectly clear to my client that a therapist works on the stuff from your past, a, a sponsor takes you to 12-step meetings and works the steps with you. But a recovery coach gives you the information that you need right now to solve the problem that exists right now and help you maintain your recovery by doing a recovery plan and working the plan. Now, for those of you that are still um, uh, being introduced to the concept of recovery coaching, uh, I get this question too, and I think this is a good time just to try to answer these questions, like because uh, they come up a lot. But uh, we do work with people in AA that go to that do have sponsors, just like if some people were in a in an AA fellowship and they had a therapist, or you know, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. it, we are a part of. Oh, my cat's trying to say hi. Or or the uh, 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 treatment centers are starting to recognize the value of recovery coaches and in what capacity. I think there was some confusion um, and I think there still is as far as well we already have drug and addiction counselors so why would we need recovery coaches? So what, what are your thoughts about that? Time. A recovery coach is there all the time. I answer the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning. I have clients calling me from California at 9 their time, 11 my time. It's like very important. A therapist can't be there at your beck and call. And, you know, when it comes to the 12-step traditions, you're really breaking a tradition if you charge for the time that you spend with a client in a 12-step meeting. So I don't charge when I escort a client to a 12-step meeting, number one. But also, I don't want to break that tradition. So I stay away from doing the steps with my clients. I urge them to get a sponsor. I urge them to get a therapist. If there's co-occurring disorders going on, I urge them to speak to a psychiatrist and consider medical assisted treatment. But the differences are really that. We use the same models of recovery. We use the same psychological theories. We use motivational interviewing. So we use a lot of the same tools but we have certain places that we end as a coach and a therapist begin. And just like a sponsor, we have certain areas that we don't go. And, you know, so we don't break the 12 traditions. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed, too, there's a different, just like with therapists, and there's, a, there's many theoretical orientations that are available in, and I think it's important when you are considering a recovery coach to see what they're what their own philosophy and values are. Um, you're, you mentioned a lot of uh, AA and sponsors um, in, your, in your book, too. 
and uh, but that doesn't mean every recovery coach is aligned or affiliated with the AA principles and traditions and and uh, you know uh, that that level of uh, or that aspect of recovery. So there's a lot of different theoretical orientations, or, and there's also just a lot of um, values that are considered. So, you know, just like I, I tell people, when you're working with a therapist, you, ha you have to make sure it's the right fit. And I think that, that goes across the board with anyone, especially if you're um, making yourself in a position where there's a confidentiality, and there, there's going to be some vulnerability, and there's it's a process. So it's really important to make sure that um, whoever you're working with, whether it's, you know, recovery coach or therapist or psychiatrist, that it's a good fit and it's a, and it's the right fit for you. A coach is a little bit more client-centered. So from a coach's standpoint, we're looking at a client and Many times, our clients don't want to walk into a NAA meeting. Many times, why? They're afraid of seeing a neighbor or a, a colleague from work. That kind of fear is prevalent. So we have to be prepared as coaches to understand smart recovery, uh, life ring. We have to understand Buddhist recovery. We have to m understand mindfulness meditation. In our toolbox, we have to put together every peer mutual support group and hunker down and really learn about them because we're going to come up against the anti-12 step client more frequently than you would really expect. Now again, many times the client is in a region where many of these other peer support groups don't exist, so AA or NA comes in handy, you know, as some form of mutual support. But it's as important for the coach to understand everything, everything about potential alternatives of mutual support groups. There's a lot more out there than just AA and NA. And I think that's really important. I was just reading earlier this morning about um, it's, it's, it's unethical not to discuss with people in the, the different options that are available. And I totally agree. You don't have to be limited just by AA, although the communal support is such an important component and consistent motivator for someone in recovery because no one wants to be uh, sober all by themselves all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm very familiar with Life Ring and uh, Smart Recovery, mm -hmm. as you may know, and mm -hmm. I really would love to see an expansion of just all of these different different approaches made more available and face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, some of them are available online. online. Mm -hmm. there's, a lot, there's a lot of Life Ring activity in my area because I live in Northern California and they're based out of Oakland and there's mm -hmm. a lot of, there's a lot of influence in smart recovery because they're based in Southern California so we yeah we definitely want to see expansions on all fronts and um, although they are popping up you know in Canada and in many different countries but the amount of meetings uh, that are are available like AA there's just there's just not that that volume, so there's a right. Yeah, I mean it. it this is relatively new. I mean, AA has been around for 75 years, I think. Um, Smart recovery is uh, maybe since 1994, something like that. So there's you know just more people that can that can get involved. And um, some some of these like Smart Recovery. When I became a certified recover, uh, Smart Recovery facilitator, um, that was that option was made available by Smart Recovery online. So mm -hmm. there are there are a means to start getting these meetings, so you don't have to just wait till one sprouts up. You can actually um, become empowered and and start your own meeting. And I think that's uh, we're going to see a lot more of that. And like you said, yes. women for sobriety—they're really big on on your side of the of the true, world. true, because they're out of New York. Well, right. it, it also is 
for all of the addictions. You know, there's a dual recovery for people who are dually diagnosed with an addiction and a mental health disorder. There are shopping and eating and there's a lot more groups that are available so our clients have the opportunity of really looking at not only their choice of peer mutual support groups but how many addictions are we dealing with here you know are we just an addict in using drugs or are we also a sex addict are we duly diagnosed? So this is a process and it is very important for a coach to really be very well versed in all of the possible types of groups and possible addictions and mutual support groups that service those addictions. Absolutely and I think it's, uh, it's uncharted territory for for me to be so involved with uh, ex explaining that recovery coaches are also dealing with people that are uh, ex uh, dealing with co-occurring disorders. Mm -hmm. That I mean, you really have to have a lot of education and a, and a consistent learning. It's a consistent learning curve because there's always there's so many changes in the field. There's always more scientifically based information. So it's not it's not you just finish your training and then you're pretty much good to go. It's it's really a lifelong endeavor, which I think is a great motivator for your client to see that, you know, it is a process. We've all heard it's you know, it's it's not a race. It's a I mean it's not a marathon. It it takes it takes a, a, a long time and a and a true commitment to yourself it, as someone in recovery and also that, that passion and like you said it's very client centered which is uh, one of the one of the reasons why I really love it so much because you know there's a genuine authenticity when you're a recovery coach because you know for most of us we've been there so we have the that lived our experiential experience is and then our our knowledge and our information just continues to grow so it's um you know, important that you mentioned there are so many resources available for our for our clients, and also just our, our perspective on how we how we think about our clients, which is which is um, empowering for them. And it's not based on um, their deficits, but it's based on on their assets, and they continue to build on mm -hmm. that. Or like you said, you know, it might be a whole new concept. So there's a there's a lot of learning involved with that as well. So true. So well said. So well said. I'm wearing these contacts. They're they're, they're really bothering me. So I can see my eyes keep rolling around. <laughs> I should have put in a new pair. But so sorry about that. Um. So so tell us about what you what you do. Um. On the East Coast. Now you used to be a travel escort, but you you since Stop, stop doing that or do you still do that? Oh, no, no. If Rick Parrish calls me up and he says, I need somebody to be taken from Seabrook House, which is here in South Jersey, to Tucson, uh, to, you know, I will go ahead and jump on a plane with that person because that's a day trip. Uh, most of my work is done with recovery coaching, which is meeting with a client usually on a weekly basis for an hour and then being available on the phone but also as a sober companion which means I often pick up the client right at the doorstep of the treatment center bring the client back to their house and reintroduce them into that same life that drove them to drink and drug in the first place introduce them to their first 12-step meeting, get an idea of potential sponsors or temporary sponsors, and then systematically for however long that particular client needs, whether there's a, a short window before that client is admitted into a halfway house, or whether that client wants to go back to work after a week or so, 
or whether there's a lot of work to be done and we line up a therapist, a coach for the family, a family therapist, and perhaps a psychiatrist. So there's a lot of things to do in uh, a week's time after a person comes out of treatment. And that's very well done by being there 24-7, literally sometimes uh, sleeping in the same hotel room as a client. And that's the sober companionship aspect of a recovery coach. I also work a lot with drug courts. Drug courts are very big in uh, ways of cutting down on putting people into prisons that have done minor offenses dealing with selling drugs. And so oftentimes drug courts are totally separate justice systems, totally different courts that deal with these offenders of drug uh, cases separately. And I work very closely with the drug court here in Camden County and we work with putting those clients into intensive outpatient programs and making sure that they get co-occurring treatment uh, and it's a it's a great program um, one of the first actually what I credit him to be the first recovery coach Bob Timmons started uh, the foundation of drug court counselors in California oh I didn't know that yeah you know who Bob Timmons is you you uh write about him in your book. He's yeah. considered he's the, the first recovery he's the coach. First recovery coach. Yeah. And now yeah. there's a foundation and uh, this is this is what I mean about the, the passion and the compassion with being a recovery coach. One of the people that he helped, he, he went from rock stars like helping Aerosmith and then you write about in your book that then he uh, did pro bono work for a struggling homeless teenager and that teenager is now running the, the Bob Timmons Foundation. Jeff, right. That is incredible. That is it, just, I love it's that. Crazy. And he, why did Bob Timmons do that? Because Bob Timmons was homeless from age 12 or 13 and was into drugs, into gangs, everything. Put, did a stint in jail. And so he knew that if you didn't intercede with these kids at a young age, they're going to be lost. They were going to be lost. And, um, you know, it, he could work with a client that's paying five, six hundred dollars a day like Aerosmith did and go on tour and then turn around and find a homeless kid a shelter, free treatment, and even work with some of his clients on one of them happens to or used to be at USC in the admissions department and he Bob Timmons would send kids to him all the time get this kid into USC get this kid into USC so his connections between his clients and who we knew were fantastic for him helping these kids get sober I think that's yeah. You you pay um, you pay such respect and homage yeah. to his his true pioneering efforts. I mean, he really is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's no disputing who's the first one, but he's think, number one. <laughs> yeah, he's number one, and rest rest in peace. And it's it's amazing to see his work through the continued efforts such as yourself and Crossroads. Um, that's it's a recovery coaching uh, institute that's available online, mm -hmm. and, and there's there's just more and more interest. I think because there's it was really a a piece of the of the puzzle that is now um, an important component and it's being acknowledged in, in in the whole grand scheme of recovery. So I think it's all about you know holding your client until they can you know and, <laughs> and work with them until they're so they're able to to learn or relearn these these uh, ways to cope and deal, so they they don't see um, relapse as an option, but just their 
their their future and it's healthy. And I was just talking with someone this morning about just how I see myself um, from where I used to be to where I am now, and it's it's just it's so um, memorable in, in the respect that it reminds me of just a su such a broken soul. But it doesn't mean that mm. those actions or, or that time is, is the defining time for you. It's, it's it's something you can get through, and you do need a support system, and that's why communal resources are so vital. And working with a recovery coach is is such a crucial. Of course, I think that such a crucial way of getting back out there and living life, and and being able to handle when things don't seem to be going your way. Or, or getting and learning a new perspective, and the one thing I'm really um, uh, I voice very very uh, thoroughly is just the sense of empowerment that these clients have once they realize I can do this, and it, it's uh, it's really it's really beautiful and it's it's not uncommon. Uh, fortunately, I get to see it a lot, and it's it's a real motivator for me because I mean for most of us. As recovery coaches, we were there. We we really understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that there's definite congruence there. So it's not like just talking to someone who who doesn't have a clue, but they have a degree. It's like, you know, in in most cases, we have both. <laughs> well, there are a lot of recovery coaches who don't have a degree. They maybe have a GED, and you talked about communal resources. This is where they come in. The recovery coach industry really was spawned by Bill White, Michael Loveland, David Boyle, I probably, and writing about this new recovery management theory or model. Mm -hmm. And they saw that there was this huge hole between treatment and long term sobriety. And how could this hole be filled? And that's where they came up with the concept of a recovery coach. The recovery coach doesn't have to be highly paid working with millionaires or rock stars. A recovery coach can also be working from a recovery support center, which now many of the state governments have adopted the recovery management model and are funding these recovery support centers. And these recovery support centers are specifically for people trying to stay sober. You can go to one of these centers. Most of them are in urban regions, but they're, at least here in New Jersey, they're starting to spread out into suburban areas. You can go and you can take a workshop on how to write a resume or learning how to use a computer or you can take anger management or family planning. There's 12-step meetings. You walk in the door of a recovery support center and you're assigned a coach. Often those coaches themselves had walked into the center and gone through the program and t took certification courses and said, I'm giving back. I'm giving back. I'm going to help someone else get sober. And there's a recovery support center here in Jersey that I'm closely affiliated with in Voorhees. Another one up in Patterson. Both are funded by the state. But what's happening throughout the state of New Jersey? Churches are starting recovery support centers. People with a little bit of money are saying, I'm giving back to the community. I'm going to start a recovery support center. Hospitals are starting recovery support centers. Homeless shelters are starting recovery support centers. Places where people can spend time with other people in recovery that are sober and immediately get a recovery coach to help them along the way. And a recovery coach at a support center will go out and drive a person to a job interview. We will give free bus passes to people so they can get to work. We even have free lunch Thursdays where we feed everybody lunch. Wow, that's and, incredible. Yeah, and the first meeting is an AA meeting. The second meeting after lunch is a NA meeting. We have the deaf and hard of hearing with an interpreter at those meetings. So it's like, it's just unbelievable. For someone who has nothing, 
who just got out of a treatment center and doesn't have a car, doesn't have a job, doesn't have an income, wife kicked him out of the house. What is that person going to do during the day? You know, hang out on the street corner and cop more drugs? Yeah. No. Now, Bill White said, put them somewhere. Show them that they can go to a, a warm place, TV, mutual support and computer training, workshops, help that person re-enter society, relearn those life skills, the drinking and drugging just took them down a wrong path, and then slowly that person will get a job. In fact, there's a story about uh, a fellow at Evers Village up in Patterson, uh, walked in homeless, walked in a heavy drug and alcohol problem, four years, became a volunteer recovery coach, owned his own car, owned his own house, and is still giving back to Eva's Village as a recovery coach. So that's from homeless and destitute with a severe drug and alcohol dependency problem to fully independent, self-supporting individual. That's really incredible. You know, yesterday I just read an article about um, the new CEO for the McShin Foundation. Seven years ago, she walked through those doors, destitute, broken, um, single mother, and now she's the now she made it all the way to the CEO. It's just incredible. Good. Good. I, I think I think I want to leave on that note that mm -hmm. you know there's there, there's uh, more and more examples that we're so happy to share and, and to see and it's uh, it, it's it's really spreading and anything is contagious. So you know we're definitely in the in the right uh, direction as far as community and positivity and resources. So. Um, by being able to be so comprehensive and, and, and really uh, seeing all of the facets of these problems and, and starting to um, put directives in in place and uh, recovery community centers. When I, I, I just think that's so fantastic. I, I would love to see one and uh, be involved with one in my area. And it's um, I think we're seeing more and more of them because uh, it, it's it just makes sense, and it and it reduces it reduces crime, it reduces prison, it reduces you know all, all of the negatives. I mean, there's there, there's not one problem with uh, seeing this seeing the same old problem in in new ways and new solutions, and and that's what that's what you're you're about, and in paving the way for for others and sharing all of your incredible wealth of information, and uh, I really appreciate I really appreciate it. You Definitely continue to inspire and motivate me in, in all of my endeavors as well. You're making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, those t-shirts are on the way. <laughs> Melissa Killeen, you're a recovery president. <laughs> well, I mean, it takes it just it, it takes motivation and and to be able to and that's why I do the show. I, I want people to be inspired and to be motivated by the the efforts, um, even at a level like you achieve, you know, and, and to see people that like you just explain were destitute, homeless, and and they're at a they're in a position in their lives where they can give back, and, and it, it's it's just incredible. You really don't see that in a lot of communities, and so there's there's a lot of collaboration and inspiration and hope within our own. So. Yay! Happy, happy to be a part of that. <laughs> so where can we find you? Where can we get this beautiful book? I'm actually a, quite a proponent of it, as you know. <laughs> Everybody now asks me, what's a recovery coach? I'm like, you know, there's this great book out. <laughs> Tell you all about it. The book is available at Amazon. Just type in Recovery Coach and it'll pop up. And you can also, you see my website. Uh, there's a link at the website which will take you right to the Amazon book page. Um, and also my blog which is at mkrecoverycoaching.com. I'm in doing a very special series that features daily conversations that I'm having with the variety of recovery coaching clients that I have. So I'm putting together very short blogs of 
these experiences that I'm having with my clients. So it's kind of like a day in the life of a recovery coach. And oh, fantastic! Somebody, I didn't know that. I'm, I will definitely check it out. Check it out. Check yeah, it out. I'm so, and, I'm just so glad that you're that you're doing this. It's really exciting. <laughs> I know it's so exciting for me too. <laughs> believe it or not, every day I learn something new, and you know, thank God. Thank yeah, God. definitely. I learn, I, I, and I love it. It's every day. I'm not kidding. Every single day, I learn something new, and it's just, it's just, you know, that feeling. The more you learn, the less, the less you feel you know. It's very true. Yeah. <laughs> so true. I was like, I've never felt comfortable calling myself an expert at anything. Like, I'm a lifelong learner. <laughs> Good place to be. Yeah, definitely. So, again, Melissa Colleen, you can find her at mkrecoverycoaching.com. Pick up a copy of that book. Uh, one more time. It looks like <laughs> this one, like my own copy. And also, you can uh, check out her blog, and I will do the same at mkrecoverycoaching.com. Check her out. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Melissa. Thanks for having me on, Shira. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.